We've been making uh, Christmas sacks. Uh, these make beautiful gift packaging and of course it's not just for Christmas you can make these for all year round and the nice thing is you can make them in all different sizes like the smaller one I've got there for smaller presents larger ones for larger presents long ones for bottles if you're giving a gift of a, a bottle of wine maybe and they're very very simple to make so let's take a look at how I made my pink one. Oh, what have you found? The lining fabric measures uh, 15 inches by 11 inches, but the outside fabric actually measures an inch less because I want the lining to fold over the edge so you get a nice border across the top. Um, on the outside, I'm going to put a Christmas tree, which is a triangle, and I've cut out a pot shape that goes underneath there, so I'll zigzag stitch or satin stitch to apply those. And then I need a channel to thread the ribbon through, which I've made from a piece of fabric two inches wide, iron over both edges by about a quarter of an inch or so and inwards at the end and that needs to be about two inches shorter than the outside of the fabric because I don't want that to disappear into the, um, the seam allowance because I won't be able to get the ribbon threaded through and my ribbon, I need two pieces of ribbon which are a little bit wider than my fabric by about four or five inches and that's going to be my drawstring. I can always cut those down afterwards if they seem to be a little bit too long. So I've already sewn the channel onto one side of my fabric as you can see there. So just sew across the top and across the bottom, lock the stitches at the end or back stitch a couple of times so that's not going to come undone. And then I just need to make sure that the other side of the channel goes in the same place so it looks even all the way around. And that's about an inch and a half from the top of my bag so that looks about right there so I'll just pop a couple of pins in make sure it's straight you can measure and mark that if you like maybe use some um, air or water erasable ink to make sure it's straight but you know after all it's a gift bag it's not a dress that's going on the red carpet um, so that looks about right there so again if you've got a lock stitch on your machine then use that if you haven't shush then use a back stitch. And again, just sew down both sides, um, leaving enough room for the ribbon to go through the centre of the channel. Now if you're going to put any kind of embellishment onto the front and, and the back, if you like, of the bag, do that now before you piece it all together. So if you're going to put baubles and ribbons or bows or initials, names, any kind of decoration, do that now. So remember I'm going to put my tree on the front of there. And again, I'm going to guess where that's going to sit centrally. Uh, if you wanted to measure and mark that, then do so. So I'm just going to pin that into the centre. And my little pot for my tree is going to sit underneath again in the centre. Don't do, uh, put it too close to the base of the bag because I'm going to fold that under to make the base square. So I'm going to choose a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. And it needs to be a zigzag stitch that's quite close together. Um, so you need to be able to adjust that. So zigzag stitch, number five on my machine. Um, and reduce the width of the stitch, which gives you a satin stitch. And that means that the stitches are really close together and helps to stop the fabric from fraying as well. So, I'm going to all the way around like this. I'm going to go just a little bit wider with this stitch. This is the same kind of stitch as you would use if you were sewing on a badge or um, a name ribbon in the garment. And it's a little bit time consuming, but it's, it's worth it because it means the fabric's not going to fray and it'll last longer if it goes in the wash as well. A 
And normally at this point I'd press, but I'll just carry on for time's sake at the moment. So the next thing I need to do is to sew the top of the outside layer to the top of each piece of its lining, just with a straight stitch. I'm not worried about seam allowances on these pieces. I normally use the edge of my foot to depict where um, the seam's going to go. So just a straight stitch across the top. And the same with the second side. Right sides together. Pin this if you like. Otherwise, just make sure that the raw edges line up. And the next thing to do is to sew the bottoms of each piece together. So that's my outside of my sack. And then sew together the lining side. So then I've got a really big tube. Now before I sew the sides of my bag together, this is the bit that's going to make the base of my bag look square. So I need to take one side of each of the front panels and fold the hem that I've just sewn in by about an inch. It doesn't matter the exact size as long as it's the same on all sides. So I've folded in an inch that side and then the other side in an inch again, like so. Just making sure I've got both sides the same. And I'll pop a pin in there. So again, the centre seam needs to go <coughs> in Alfie. And fold inwards by around about an inch. Could be an inch and a half. The, the wider the fold, then the larger the base of your bag is going to be. And you need to do that on both sides. So you've got that kind of shape. So there's my seam. And I've folded the two sides of the bag in like so. Now you can measure that, of course, if you wanted to. I, I, I tend to just gauge that, like so. So there's my seam in the centre of the two folds. I'll pop another pin in there. And then do the same with the lining side. So again, open up the, the two sides of the bag, fold that into the inch, if you have a one inch fold, then the base of your bag will be a two inch base. So fold in evenly like so. And pin. And the same on the other side. So one side. Two sides. So if you wanted a wider base, I'd cut your fabric wider and do maybe a one and a half inch fold that'll give you a three inch base or a two inch fold will give you a four inch base depending on what you're going to put in here Oops. okay 
and now I'm going to sew all the way around the outside of the bag making sure that my seams here, I'd normally press those before I sew so you can press the seams open if you wanted to making sure that those seams match because those are the seams that you're going to see at the top of the bag I need to leave a gap in one side of the lining so I can turn that the right way around and that needs to be around about four inches just in the side want to make sure that those seams match up. You can ease those in a little bit if you wanted to, which means you're going to pull on one side to make sure both of the seams meet. This is where I'm going to leave my gap. So I'm going to back stitch just to make sure that those stitches don't come undone. Leave a nice long gap, back stitch and then carry on sewing down to the base. Then on the second side, I can sew all the way down. Again, just making sure that my seams line up. I'll take all of my pins out. And then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out. Have your iron at hand at this point as well, because normally I would um, press around the top and all over the seams before I finished. Where the hole is in the side of the lining, it's only the lining and nobody's going to see it, so I wouldn't worry too much about uh, being perfect or hand sewing that together. I'm just going to do a straight stitch over the opening on my sewing machine. that. And then push the lining inside the outer layer of the bag. And you can see where I folded up the hem, that's what's forming the base of the bag. And because the outside of the bag is slightly shorter than the inside, I've got about a half an inch fold over at the top as well, which I think makes quite a nice border. When that's pressed, you'll have a nice neat corner to the base of the bag, which comes up the side, as you can see there. Before I put the ribbon through, I've got some pom-poms in the same colour green of fabric. And if I attach these just underneath, where the, uh, the lining meets the outside, then it not only uh, keeps the two layers of fabric together, it adds that uh, decorative interest, it makes it a little bit more unusual. So I'm going to take the accessory compartment off my machine and pop the bag over the top. So normally I would have pressed this beforehand and I'm just going to sew just underneath that, uh, the lining, and just pop a straight stitch, making sure my pom-poms are out of the way, and just sew that all the way around.
just put the end of my pom-poms in to make that neater when I get back to the beginning as well. thing to do is to put the ribbon through the, the channels. Now you've cut two pieces of ribbon, both to slightly longer than I actually need, and I thread one through the channel in one direction and the other one in the opposite direction. So when I pull the two together I'll have the drawstring effect. And I've put a safety pin on the end to make it easier to thread that through. So there's one. I'll just knot the two ends together so they don't pull through. And you can either leave the knots on the outside or you can pull them into the channel so you don't see them if you want to disguise those a little bit. So there's my second piece of ribbon. Pin on the end. And this goes through in the opposite direction. side and through the other. And again knot the ends of those together. And there's my bag finished. Just cut that thread off, make it neater. And I think we're all ready for Christmas time. 